Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, Outpost Natural Foods Co-op, and Superior Equipment and Supply. Sigrid from Winky's Market. Why don't you come with me and meet the family? Here we have Don and Jane Winky, mom and dad. Hi. My husband Dave and my sister Marit. Why don't you guys all come on inside and we'll show you our market. This is our retail store. Our store is in a renovated barn. We have a selection of pie fillings, which of course we have Door County Chair Pot, Cherry Pie Filling, and our large selection of homemade pickles. Here's our canning processing kitchen. We're going to make some pickles. We do need a few more things though. Let's go get some fresh cucumbers. Our parents have, um, own the, have been here since late 1966, so it's been, what, 47 years almost? And then in the early 90s is when the processing kitchen was state and federally approved to be able to make and sell the pickles, so another 22 years or so of making the pickles and selling them. Here's one of our pickle patches. Mom's already picking some cucumbers. What do you got for us? We do grow a lot of our own produce for our pickles, not all of it because we're far beyond that, but we grow our own cucumbers, some of our own cucumbers, we grow our own beets, we grow a lot of beans for our dilly beans, all of our own dill. We do grow all of our own dill. Now we can take you in and show you how we grade the cucumbers on our cucumber grater. So we're going to put the cucumbers on our cucumber grater. It starts with the smaller cucumbers in the beginning and as they go down the machine, the, the larger ones fall into their slots. And this size here is what we're going to be canning this afternoon in our canning kitchen. It's the perfect size for our dill spheres that we're going to be doing today. Okay, now that we have our cucumbers washed and speared, we are going to make pickles. I have some of the jars prepped here. We have onion and garlic and fresh dill. You just saw us go buy it out in the field and now we have it picked and ready to go. So we start with a little bit of onion, a few cloves of garlic, some fresh dill, and everything here at Winkies is hand packed. So they were hand cut, and now we're hand packing them. All of our recipes that we use are actually my mo our mom's mom's recipe, Grandma Nelson's recipes. We've modified them to some degree. Um, I, she probably doesn't like the fact. I shouldn't say dozen, but the fact that we use hot, a lot of people like hot pickles. And so we um, put hot peppers in some of our varieties of pickles, and I don't think she ever would have thought about that, but um, you know, we gotta do what the customers want. And then we add a little bit more onion, 
another clove of garlic, a little bit more dill. And to top it off, we need another pickle for on the top. You want your pickles to be nice and tight, otherwise they'll all rise up. All right, now that we have our pickles packed nice and tight in the jars, we're gonna add our brine. We do around seven or eight different brines here, and the brine is what makes the pickles. We do some with sugar, some without sugar, very simple ingredients. Um, the simpler, the better. We don't use any kind of um, preservatives in any of our pickles. So now that we've added the brine, we will take it over and we wipe the top of the lid, add a lid to it and a ring. And these will be ready to go into our hot water bath. And they will process for approximately 15 minutes. This is an average day of pickle making at Winky's Market. Our ladies hand pack all these in our canning kitchen. Um, we do over 15 different varieties of pickles right here in our canning operation. We distribute our products throughout the state of Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, and Upper Michigan. So you can always find Winky's Market pickles in your local grocery store. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's get our pickles out of the canner. And here's our done product. All right, I'm Sigrid. Thanks for coming to Winky's Market and let me show you how to make pickles. are at St. Paul's Church, which is food chain one, which is stop number 12 on the map of the Farm Art Detour, which is the signature event of the Fermentation Fest. My name is Donna Newworth. I am the co-founder and executive director of Worm Farm Institute, and we are the producing organization of Fermentation Fest. Fermentation Fest is about abundance and transformation. It's a live culture convergence. Whether it's from grain to beer, or from milk to cheese, or from cabbage to kimchi, or from one sort of community to another. The Farm Art Detour is our, uh, is our main attraction, and that is available from dusk to dawn for the entire 10 days. And there are 39 official stops on the map, but there are plenty of what we call rogue installations, unofficial things that people just put up on their own. We had a pilot year in 2011 where we weren't really sure how it was going to work. After the first year, 100% of people polled who participated wanted to participate again. Well, if Larry's going to do it, sure, why not? There's still a lot of experimentation going on here, but I think the this, this spirit is very generous. And uh, because so many people appreciate the drive out here and spend money locally and boost the local economy, uh, it's making converts out of the people who are quite um, skeptical to begin with. And we're, um, I think technically we're in Laval, but I'm not actually sure. We're out in the country between Laval and Reedsburg. Hi. Come on over here. I would like you to talk about your beer jelly. It's the only beer jelly in the world as far as we know, right? Well, let's hope so, so far. <laughs> so we were gearing up for Fermentation Fest last year, and I did a beer tasting with a local uh, brewer, Dave Dietz, who's now brewing at the Corner Pub in Reedsburg. And at the end of our beer tasting that day, I went home and went to sleep and woke up in the middle of the night thinking, why shouldn't I make jelly out of beer? So we gave it a shot, a little trial and error, and here we are today selling uh, locally brewed beer. It's excellent with your sausage and cheese trays, good to glaze a pork chop or a portobello mushroom or maybe some tempeh on the grill. It really seals in the juices. I've been a chef for about 27 years and have always done preserving. I started making my first pickles and jams when I was about eight or nine. So I retired and tried to decide what I was going to do with the rest of my grown-up years and got involved with the Fermentation Fest. I think the most 
important aspect is the stories that I hear from people. And it really just opens up conversations and opens up people telling stories about their history and then connecting it to the modern interest in food preservation. So each jar is a story not just for me, um, but for the people who come and uh, visit us wherever we happen to be. Straight or do you put it on something? No, you can just stick your paddle okay. right in there. <laughs> surprising. I mean, surprising. Well, chocolate is actually a fermented food. A lot of people do not know that, but it's fermented at the country of origin. My signature chocolate right now is my sea salt sugar baby. It's made mostly with honey from my farm beehives. Uh, I'm running one for fermentation fest. It's not fermented, but it's made from squash from my farm garden. It's finished with Wisconsin maple syrup, um, honey from my beehives, and ginger. It's been a phenomenal seller. In fact, all of my chocolates have honey from my farm beehives, but I also try to support other local farmers to use their products in my chocolates as well. The biggest complaint we have at this fest was not enough stuff to eat. So we really needed to ramp up the, the prepared, ready-to-eat food. I mean, jams and jellies are fine, but we need pizza and sandwiches and things. So we invited La Fortuna in this year. I'm very happy to have them. I'm Scott Lynch. I'm one of the co-proprietors of La Fortuna Pizza based in Madison. We specialize in a Neapolitan style brick oven pizza cooked with wood and using Wisconsin grown ingredients. I mean it started out of a love of eating pizza <laughs> and we uh, built a stationary wood burning oven at our house to kind of support a habit and as is often the case a hobby turned into a profession. So that's Pizza Bianca. It's a dough that we make ourselves, uh, our own homegrown rosemary, uh -huh. uh, a little bit of olive oil, uh, garlic salt from Penzi Spices, and two kinds of cheese from Farmer John's Cheese in Dodgeville. There's no food that's more approachable than pizza, so it's an ideal vehicle for us to try to connect people with their farmers. Mm. <laughs> wow. that's a I'm Molly Balcom Raleigh. And I'm Emily Stover. We're artists from St. Paul, Minnesota. And we're here at the Dumpling House, our installation for Fermentation Fest. People come in and they say, oh, so is this a class or how do we pay? And we say, no, it's, it's an art installation. And then right away they're like, oh, okay, well, what do I do? You know, or I have been uh, blown away by the reception that we've received for Dumpling House. You know, and when you do something like this, there's always that point when you wonder if if what you're doing makes any sense. Yeah. And I think that there was this moment the very first day, if I'm not mistaken, when a, an older woman says, we are the filling. <laughs> yes. And it was just, we knew that we kind of hit on something that really made sense, not just to us, but to people who live in this community. It's a beautiful success. It is a live culture convergence, <laughs> and we're very happy to be part of it. Arts engagement is a very important part of this because uh, we're bringing people out of galleries and out of museums into the world to sort of interact with the landscape and it's kind of a great example of how to do that. I better see what style number this is. I forget. Wait. Here it is. Okay. 26. This is stop number 26 on the Farm Art Detour. The artist of this sculpture, truck sculpture, is named John Himmelfarb. He's from both Chicago and Spring Green, just down the road a piece. He actually drove this here 
This is Kyle Martin, local plein air painter who is uh, capturing this sculpture um, in oil. It's interesting, I actually saw another one of his pieces in the Wyoming Valley off really? of Highway 23 in the spring. Huh. I painted that. I thought I didn't How know about it was that? a piece of art. I mean, it was the same kind of thing, just all these fuel tanks stacked up on a truck. And I saw it and I just thought it was an interesting way to I want to see that recycle. painting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's beautiful. I mean, the thing that I do as a landscape painter is I kind of have to look at the lines of the landscape in a different way. And what this does is it allows even the residents of the area to take a second look in that same way. Um, it's a different look, but it's just connecting us with the land and connecting us with the farmers. Um, I grew up farming and the, you know, it's just really important to um, support local farmers and because without them we're not going to have any food so it just makes people connect with their farmers. Art is food for the soul and so we need to nourish our soul especially in today's culture in the same way that we need to nourish our bodies with wholesome foods. Scogan from Recent Family Farm in Loganville, Wisconsin. And I'm here representing the Ridge and Valley Growers, which is a whole group of wonderful local farmers from the communities of Laval, Hill Point, Lime Ridge, North Freedom, Reedsburg, and the Dells. So we put together all of our produce this year to have this culture stand at the Art Asylum in Lime Ridge. We did meet a lot of new people and um, Let's see, I think probably our biggest sellers were the garlic and the mushrooms. We had a lot of interest in Deb Dube's Aronia Berry Jam. We also had some interest in Cedar Grove cheese curds and the other pottery that was here at the stand. The Aronia jelly is really good. Tell me about that. What is it? Um, Aronia is... Uh, it's higher in antioxidants than any of the other jellies and uh, native to this area. It's, the berries are black and they grow on bushes about the size of like high bush blueberries. Um, and they taste really awful if you just eat them raw. But as soon as you cook them, you can use them in baking just the way you do blueberries. Um, and it makes a dynamite jelly, especially if there's uh, some sugar involved. Well, I don't know if you can see here, there's quite a distance between here and the yarn because they love to roll in all kinds of stuff. And of course, their fiber picks all of that up. So there's a lot of prep work that goes into making the yarn. So the spinning the yarn is the least of, of the work, actually. It's the picking that takes the most time and it's the most, well, that's tedious. <laughs> um, I also have solar panels. He's, he's standing in front of the solar panels uh, with a straw hanging out of his mouth. They don't seem to notice when there's straw or whatnot hanging out of their mouths. Doesn't bother them a bit. It's a pretty good life, right? Yes, yes. People think that, oh, llamas, they spit. They, they really only spit at each other or if they're really angry about something. Um, they are aggressive feeders, so uh, they have a lot of food fights with each other. <laughs> and then for people, it's just a matter of not being in the middle of that. And it's really funny because uh, after they've spat at each other, they, they kind of go there with their mouths open and they can't eat. So they have this food fight, fighting over the food, but then they can't eat it. They're just too upset.
Russell Reedsburg, and this was um, what we call a farm form, uh, which are uh, creative expressions by folks who don't necessarily consider themselves artists. In this case, it was a collaboration between a construction company, Friedy and Associates, and Veerbooker, which is an engineering firm in town. And so this is Castle Reedsburg, which is made from local straw and recycled pop bottles. Uh, serpentine. Uh, frankly, I don't know what the title signifies, but I know that he wanted to have an object that you could see the land through and that it evoked some uh, organic shapes and reflected the um, landscape across the street. Um, and then uh, what, what do you want people to take away from this experience? Uh, being somebody that comes from the city to just come out here, uh, what do you want them to leave with? Well, uh, fermentation is transformation. And so I think it's really important for people to see how places and food and lives and futures can be transformed. And so I think I want people to see possibilities and revitalize people's imaginations. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, Outpost Natural Foods Co-op, Superior Equipment and Supply, the restaurants of Potawatomi Bingo Casino, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, Something Special from Wisconsin, and Colectivo Coffee Roasters. Mm -hmm.